great dragon raid. Speaking of the new raid, we're excited to have players participate in the upcoming Crate Dragon Hunt. The plans we will, are sharing with you are still in development, but let's get into some details of what you might expect. First, you'll be heading to the native home planet of the Crate Dragon, Tatooine. We hope your Tuscans are up for the challenge, just like our art team will need to be up to the challenge of accurately depicting the enormous Crate Dragon in our game. We want to make sure you feel the size of this beast as you take it on experience without giving away too much of what you'll be encountering with the crate dragon we want to let you know there will be two separate challenges to consider when you approach this raid first controlling the enemy monster with an array of debuffs and second dealing as much damage as possible during short windows of time i mean isn't that the goal of every raid <laughs> Controlling the enemy monster with the of buffs. That's kind of the goal of every raid. Every single one of them. Like, what? In previous raids, bosses are immune to many debuff effects because they can easily disrupt and trivialize a raid encounter. However, for this raid, we're introducing a new mechanic called Defiance. That will require players to bring these debuffs to minimize the effects of the boss's attacks. During this time, players will want to remove as many stacks of Defiance as possible before the boss takes its next turn, lest they face some dire consequences. The exact list of affected debuffs and their associated impacts is still being worked on, but players will be able to more fully utilize their character's abilities to find success in raids that feature this mechanic. The burst damage window will require players to manage big damage cooldowns to avoid devastating attacks while scoring as well as they can. Maximizing the damage potential between these windows by using some of those big cooldowns outside of the window is one avenue toward improving performance. What are you talking about? Big cooldowns like Annihilate? <laughs> or what's the other one? Annihilate's 8. Isn't there another one that's good a lot? Um, Aerial Ace, I think. Anyway, balancing ability cooldowns between damage and buffs windows while scoring as many points as possible outside of these moments is where we want to create a great deal of space for theory crafting and optimization. As with all raids, we expect this event to be a challenge at first, but you will figure out the core loops of the raid and fine tune your attempts over time. Who can I bring to the raid? <laughs> the new raid structure for this event allows for an even more thematic experience and a space for several factions to gain some new utility for this event. Players will be limited to specific factions that they have fought on the uh, wait what that have fought the crate dragon, or have appeared primarily on Tatooine. For the crate dragon raid, you will be able to bring in the following factions: Hawk Cartel, Jawa, Mandalorian, Old Republic, and Tuscan. Let's see, Tuscan weak, Jawa weak, Hawk Cartel eh, mid. Unless you have Jawa, then it's above mid. <laughs> Mandalorian, eh, and then Old Republic, eh. These aren't very good. Note that future raids may also thematically limit the units you can bring in by faction. Well, that's stupid. General Raid Changes Explained. Alongside the release of the Crate Dragon Raid, there will be some fundamental changes to how raids are handled and created. These changes are aimed at providing a clearer path of what raid to focus on and help folks reduce the amount of time spent handling and participating in raids that they have already mastered. Similar to the new territory battle experience, this new system for raids is designed to be flexible and more expandable than raids were previously. We also want to create a system that allows us to produce more raids in the future faster and easier. Point based system. First, we want to change the way raids distribute re rewards to a system that promotes cooperation and not inter-guild competition. A guild often needs to really pull together to complete the newest tier or event that they have reached, and it feels contradictory to then ask them to compete against each other simultaneously. With that in mind, we will be moving raids to a point-based system. Let me stop right there just to commentate on that last statement they were talking about. I mean, they're talking about how you're basically competing, you're in, you're, um, how do they phrase this? Yeah, you're competing against one another internally inter-guild competition that's kind of true because i mean everybody's putting up different amounts and then you get better prizes more points that you put up so like you know if, if you haven't mastered you know mastered the regular uh, uh 
what's it called um rank or raid then you're trying to get in first or whatever so then you can get those prizes so you're competing with your co guild members but at the same time the better somebody does it, it benefits the guild in the end because as long as the raid gets completed that's all that matters it's like for the challenge pit, you know, when somebody puts up high damage, I'm not like, oh, man, I wish I could do it so I could be in first. No, I'm like, oh, cool, you took a heavy brunt, so we uh, we have less to worry about so we can complete this. You know, getting prizes even when you're rank 40 is still better than nothing. So I don't really, it depends. I understand where they're coming from, but I don't always see it as a competition. I see it as good. We're winning. We're beating this thing. Come on, who's left to put up a little more damage? Well, let me see what I can do. Hopefully other people are seeing what they got left. So, I don't know. But anyways, players will no longer be competing against their guildmates, but instead focusing on earning the most points progress through phases. This means everyone in the guild will be earning the same rewards at the end of the event. There are some other changes to rewards as part of this release, so see the section below for more details. This was also a great opportunity to update the structure of raids for the future. Raids can now have a variable number of phases. Legacy raids will continue to have their four phases. The Crate Dragon raid will have a single phase, and other new raids may have a different number of phases. A raid phase will only complete after enough attempts have been submitted. Players will no longer be able to tr transition between phases in the middle of combat. What? Players will no longer be able to transition between phases in the middle of combat. What's that mean? Like, if you're in the Sith Raid and you beat round two, or whatever, phase two, which is the, the round versus um, Scion, and then it goes to Treya, are they saying that once you beat Scion, then that's it? Your turn's over? You can't transition into starting up attacking uh, Treya? So that means they're trying to take out, like, soloing. Is that what's happening? Attempts will have a maximum possible score, which will scale with difficulty. Once the score is reached, the attempt will successfully end, and the player will be able to submit will be able to submit their result if desired. What? Are they making it you can't solo anymore? Well, that was always like an achievement when you finally got to that status that you could solo. <laughs> that sucks. The final phase of each raid will stay open as long as the raid is active. This allows guild members to submit all of their attempts to earn as many points as they can. <coughs> One raid only. As we mentioned above, we also want to streamline the raid experience. We want players to focus on completing the latest experience and not juggling multiple raids that you have already mastered. If you've already mastered a raid, then you're just regularly simming the raid to earn your reward crates for the event, instead of an epic battle against terrifying foes. We decided therefore to simplify the raid system, instead of building on top of each event with a new one. One of the biggest changes with the updated raid system is that it will only allow for guilds to run one raid at a time. You can still pick any of the current raids, but your guild no longer needs to worry about running multiple raids concurrently. This will allow you to focus on the most challenging raid your guild can attempt, and work on growing to complete it. Rewards will be updated to reflect this new event format. As a side note, raid simming has now been removed as you only have to focus on one raid at a time and does not make sense under the new system. Because of this new system, we do not add simming to the heroic Sith raid nor redo that reward track. We did not add simming to the heroic Sith raid nor redo that reward track. What? In an effort to streamline inventory management, we've gone ahead and made raids have a single starting t a single starting ticket, which will be used to launch all raids past and future. There will be one raid ticket to rule them all. Once this raid comes out, other raid tickets will be removed and each guild will have the new ticket max so you can dive into your first raid with the updated experience right away. I don't like that you can only do one raid now. I mean, it was cool before. Like, sometimes we'd have three going, two of them which are simmable, and then one that we actually had to participate in. And then it's like, you get a lot of rewards. Now, we're never going to have that anymore. And then I'm just thinking, like, what if you're a smaller guild and you're trying to grow? You know, if you could run multiple guilds, I mean, multiple raids, 
you might not be getting a lot of rewards, but still, that means you'd, work, you'd be working on Han and Kenobi and Treya all at the same time. Now it's like one at a time. I don't like this idea. This is kind of stupid. It also helped if you were smaller, but in like a, a guild that could sim, then you just were getting the rewards. You don't, you don't have to worry. Like now a bigger guild's not going to want to go after something more basic, even if you need it, like say Han. You know, you're never going to get to see the regular raid, regular Rancor rank, uh, Rancor raid. And that means you're never going to, you're never going to really get to get Han. I don't like that. Unless they change their rewards, so then they all come with those prizes or something. But otherwise, I don't like this. Reward system changes. With Crate Dragon and Future Raids, we will be adjusting how you earn rewards. We, will no, we no longer want players to complete, wow, compete against their guildmates and instead work together to get as far as they can and earn the most rewards. With this change, there will be two different ways to earn rewards. A guild track and an individual track. You will earn rewards based on the amount of points you contribute from the individual track and can be claimed immediately. You will also receive rewards from your guild's track depending on the amount of points everyone in your guild earned at the end of the event. You also earn will earn rewards even if your guild does not complete the raid 100%. Guilds will be rewarded based on how many points your guild earned. So if you do complete the raid, do you get like a reward for that as well? So you get the points and completion, or because if it doesn't matter if you complete it, it just goes by points, then like, what? <laughs> I don't know. While we will reduce the amount of locations where you can earn rewards, we've taken this into close consideration so that actively participating in a raid, regardless of difficulty, will earn rewards from the personal track that equal and replace the old sim rewards, ensuring that all players retain access to those goods. Playing at higher difficulties to earn more points will steadily gain a gain access to new additional rewards. Guilds participating at a high level of difficulty will see more bountiful rewards than the total sum of prior raids. Okay. So, did that answer my question I had before? You'll still be able to get all those character shards and stuff? Hopefully so, because otherwise, what the F? <laughs> Guild Reward Track. Guild members will, will receive the same number of rewards at the end of the event. One attempt must be made to be eligible for rewards. Yeah, just like Grand Arena. Individual, uh, individual Reward Track. Rewards earned on this track can be claimed immediately when earned. If you miss claiming these rewards, they get sent to your inbox when the raid ends. Rewards now include new raid currency that can be used to purchase items from shipments. This special raid currency can only be earned from the featured raid, the latest raid released. Whenever a player joins a new guild, they are subjected to a lockout period before they can participate in a raid. Players can participate in any raid that is started after their lockout period expires. I mean, that's not new. You always had that lockout. It was always 24 hours. So if you joined, and actually it was for anything. I mean, if you joined in the middle of a territory battle, you couldn't join in. You had to wait until the next one. Or if you joined in the middle of a territory war or whatever, you know, it's, it's always been there. I don't know why they're putting that like that's something new. Limited faction use per raid. We will be limiting the factions you can bring into Crate Dragon as well as potentially in future raids. This allows us to the opportunity to implement interesting raid mechanics without needing to account for every single character in the game. While this creates many opportunities for theory crafting, it also means we have to add in extra boss mechanics to account for some of the unique abilities some characters have in the game. Strangely enough, a limited character pool opens up the design space here for us to do more extreme mechanics and bosses. This also helps us create a more thematic experience and create special mechanics for each of these new events. Star Wars is a beautiful universe. And we want to continue to embrace how cool and extraordinary the universe is. Note, existing raids remain open to same units as before. As before. Came out weird. Raid base difficulty. All raids going forward will have a base difficulty level that can be modified and adjusted for indiv individuals to earn more points for their guild. You can choose difficulty modifiers... Prior to each attempt, and restart without any penalty if you feel the battle was too hard or too easy. 
This also means that current and future raids will be available to all types of guilds. Higher GP guilds can attempt the, the same raid as lower GP guilds, but with harder modifiers to get more points and more or rewards. Base difficulty will be around G10 HSTR. Note, this balance is still being worked on and may change. Raids have additional difficulty mod modifiers that can increase the challenge in exchange for applying multipliers to point totals earned at the end of a raid. Difficulty, mod <clears throat> difficulty modifiers are selected per player, not per attempt. Wait, I just added not. That's not there. Difficulty mod Jeez. Difficulty modifiers are selected per player per attempt. You can submit different attempts at different modifiers, so you can always set the difficulty to the optimal level for a team you are bringing in. God, they got a lot that they're talking about the raids. This is kind of getting boring now. <sighs> Limited successful attempts per player. Starting with Crate Dragon Raid and all future raids, there will be a limit of attempts per player. This will allow players to focus on theory crafting and building out their best attempts rather than needing to throw their entire roster against the wall. This also allows players who can't be present at raid launch an opportunity to attempt the raid and not have to rush and worry about a guildmate soloing the raid himself. Yeah, I know. I realize that's what you were trying to do before. Mm. But still, I mean, if it lets you do a whole phase, it takes four people and the raid's done, so... <laughs> The total number of attempts may vary from raid to raid, and you will be able to restart an attempt and try again without any penalties. Don't be afraid to try a variety of modifiers. You can always rechoose the modifiers and, and attempt again without any penalty. Your raid attempts will only count if you submit that attempt and are happy with the score. You can retry without submitting a score as many times as you want. Legacy raid changes. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the existing raids and things that are going to happen to them. With all the changes we'll be making to the crate raid, crate dragon raid, some of those adjustments will trickle down to our older raids and hopefully make life easier for folks participating in them. While we were able to make some adjustments to older raids, there are still some legacy aspects that we were unable to change and they will remain the same unless noted. The pit, tank takedown, and Sith Triumvirate will be considered legacy raids and adjusted in these ways. 1. They now use the new raid point system in battle. 2. They have guild reward tracks with all guild members receiving the same rewards. 3. Their final phase will end once the boss has been defeated, like they currently do. 4. They won't have individual reward tracks. 5. Non-heroic tiers now have a 3-day timer. 5A. They do not end early when the raid is completed. What? So even if you're done, you still gotta ride out the three days? Is that what that's saying? Starter guilds now only launch tiers of the pit raid. We are removing any steps related to finishing specific legacy raids, as well as steps too closely tied to specific territory battles from all prestigious quests. <sighs> okay, that, that's under the quests. So getting rid of that crap, that's good. Let's see. We've also made strides to streamline the progression of these raids to make it better for new players and give guilds a more direct route of advancement. The first five difficulty tiers of the Sith Triumphant have been removed. It now only has two difficulties, Normal and Heroic. I thought it always did. Am I an idiot and didn't realize that? I thought there was a raid that was like that. What do we have? We have this tank down. Oh, maybe it's the... Is that the tank takedown that's like that currently? I don't know. Anyways, the order of the raids. The pit... Is... Well, that says greater than. But I think they meant less than. It goes the pit, then tank tank... Tank takedown, then Sith triumphant, then crate dragon. What about challenge pit? Where's that at? Did they just get rid of it? Or... Like, is crate dragon now challenge pit instead? 
I mean, it would make sense because that was kind of boring. You know what I mean? It was still a rancor. Now it's just something. Now it's something different. <laughs> We will also be removing the challenge Rancor rate. Oh, well, there it is. <laughs> From the game as it has served its purpose in our previous raid system. With our upgraded system and the direction we plan on taking raids in the future, we felt its existence is now unnecessary. We are removing achievements remaining, rema wow, related to completing the challenge Rancor. Well, I'd hope so. I mean, you can't complete those achievements if it's no longer a game mode. That's ridiculous. Raid blackout period. To facilitate the transition to the new raid system, we will disable all raid content approximately one week before this release. At the start of the blackout period, all raids in progress will be cancelled and no new raids can be started. These events will not pay out rewards if they are cancelled. All guilds will be granted the maximum amount of the new raid currency once the blackout period is over and can start the raid of their choice immediately. Additional Changes Raids will now run their full duration, regardless of how quickly you complete the raid. Raids are no longer able to be abandoned. This allows for the rest of the guild to still earn points. We have overhauled the event screen to include the raids, and they are now accessible from the events met table in the cantina. You can now not only access solo events from this screen, but your guild's activities such as raids, territory wars, and territory battles will also be shown here as well. You can now view the guild info screen for your own guild.